Okay, so we're now broadcasting on this, our third webinar um, in the YNGB series. Good evening. Welcome, everybody. Um, as you know, these webinars um, are focused on the business and marketing side of the industry, and we're just so pleased how well attended they've been so far. So thank you, all of you. I know we've got a few repeat customers, as it were. Um, you'll get a survey at the end of this um, broadcast. I just wanted to mention it now in case I forget later, because your feedback's really important. Uh, we've already had some great feedback and some, also some ideas about future series. Um, this series, as you know, is dealing more with the kind of here and now sharing of hints and tips um, and some insights and tools. And we're going to be looking at sort of more meatier, longer term business and marketing solutions uh, as we move forward. But any suggestions, welcome. Um, as you know, this webinar is just going to be about an hour long. We would love you to get involved with some asking some questions. So if you think of something, do use the Q&A at the bottom. And then also um, we've got the chat room as well. So feel free to say hi, feel free to make any comments. I'll be monitoring this while Sue and Joanna speak um, and uh, we'll keep an eye on things. So firstly, I want to welcome Sue Llewellyn and um, our own Joanna Albogas, our, our social media officer. Um, and tonight, of course, is all about social media essentials. I think never has the value or relevance of social media been greater than now. Um, with so much now having moved online, this is such an essential marketing tool um, and all its platforms. And uh, we want to know how to manage it effectively and confidently. And these two lovely people are going to help you do that. So um, whether you're a confident user or whether you're a novice, I'm sure there's going to be plenty for you to pick up on tonight. Um, Firstly, then I'm going to hand over to Sue Llewellyn, who's a social media consultant and trainer. She's an all round guru um, who over the last 12 or so years, Sue, is it? Um, you've been training and coaching thousands of people across the world from large global businesses to startups as well on how to best use social media to get the results you need. So, Sue, I'm going to say no more. I'm going to hand over to you. Hopefully, with my controls, you are now going to take over and you will take over the screen. Thanks, Sue. Thank you and thanks everybody for joining us. Um, I can see there's quite a few of you here which is really nice. It's always really weird just looking at the green light and not seeing any faces. Um, so I'll just talk. Uh, my background is everything I've ever done is about human behaviour and communication. I studied psychology at university. I had my own PR business and for 15 years I was a journalist in the TV newsroom at the BBC. So I uh, which I absolutely love. So telling stories, finding things, you know, interesting stuff for people to find out about and getting your message out there. And then in 2008, I thought, oh, this Twitter thing looks quite interesting. So I left and I thought this is a way of making a living in the future. And within a few months, they said, hey, Sue, um, this is the BBC, come back and show us how it works. So I started training in the newsroom, took it into the newsroom, got them all going on it. And the reason I'm telling you this really is that from then on, it's been an awful lot of media organisations, but also uh, quite a lot of big businesses. So whether it's the Foreign Office or the Bank of England or Team GB or some England footballers or lots of small businesses as well. I like to do mentoring with small businesses, but everybody's in the same boat with social media. It changes incredibly quickly. Nobody can know everything about it. Uh, one of the things I think in your questionnaires was people saying, how do I keep up? And how do I find the time? Yes, it's a question I ask myself every day. <laughs> um, so anyone who says they're a guru or an expert isn't, but I try as, as hard as I can. So I'm gonna try and share my screen. I'm not a tech wizard, I'm a social person. So I'm just gonna share my screen if it works. And, um, oops, I'm hoping it will. Let's just see that for a second. There we go. Um, can you see that? Yes, thumbs up. Julia, Joanna, can you see it? Yep, jolly good, thank you. Um, yeah, so that's my um, background. I should have put that up before. I can't see any um, messages or anything from, from here on in. I can just see Joanna and Julia. Um, the reason I put a picture of the world up there is I think it's really helpful if you think of social media um, platforms a bit like different countries. And each one is a different country with a different culture and critically a different language. So the people are different. And this is why it's really important that you don't treat all the platforms the same. Um, and they don't all speak the same kind of language. 
So what works on one platform doesn't necessarily work on the other. So I think it's really, really important that you identify which platforms you need to be on and who the people are who are inhabiting those platforms and what kind of habits they have. And I know one of the questions that people were asking was about the hashtag word. I used to get asked all the time, what is a hashtag? And now actually the, the question is more like how to use hashtags. And so if you think of hashtag like a language, you can't go and speak hashtag in some platforms, some countries, because nobody will understand you. If you're using um, more than one or two in Twitter, you'll look a bit of an idiot. It looks slightly desperate if you're hashtagging everything. Whereas in Instagram, if you're not using hashtags, you're really missing something and you have to use them. Uh, for discovery, but it's not the ones that you would think it is. And I'll talk more about that in the second webinar because we're going to be talking about Instagram. But there, there's a real art and a science to using them. So um, just back to thinking about the different platforms and the different people. I think if you think about um, social media as um, just human psychology, human behavior, and you understand why people do what they do, and you are useful and helpful to them, then that's going to be easy. One of the things one of you said, she says pointing the finger accusingly, was that you were too old for uh, understanding social media. I don't think so. Um, you're never too old, it's a state of mind. So when you're working out who you're aiming at, she says moving her slides on, um, you've really got to think who they are, not just in terms of geographics or demographics, whilst that's important, I'd say psychographics are far more important, which is a state of mind. It's the, what they could call the AIO variables, the attitudes, interests, and opinions. So you need to have a really clear idea of who your target and your core audiences are and what they need from you. And that need word, it's not what I want to tell you, it's what you need to hear from me or what your audience needs from you. And at the BBC, there was a model um, of audience needs for telling stories. And um, it was kind of six point model, she says, holding up five fingers. Um, but it was, you know, what does educate me? People want to be educated. They want to be updated. They want to be given perspective. They want to be amused um, or diverted. Uh, they want to have, you know, feel like they belong actually. And they want to be inspired. And we all want human stories. So you've got to think really clearly, what is it that your audience needs from you? And particularly in this kind of time, um, the tone of voice at the moment is really important, really important. And people are spending more time wanting to learn things. So that's fantastic for content creation. And also they want to be entertained because boy, do we need to be entertained. So I think um, thinking about who you're aiming at and what, they, what you need to tell them. So you want them to, to talk about your, your products. You want them to engage with you. You want them to sort of buy into the lifestyle and, and everything you do and to tell human stories. At the BBC, we had so much more success when a big issue was focused on a person or, a, you know, or a family to make it much more personal. And how can you be helpful to them? You know, whether it's wine pairing or how you actually do stuff with the process of growing the grapes or your problem, sadly, sorry to hear about it with the frost, you know, educating people is really important. So thinking very, very, very clearly about who you're aiming at and also what's going on in their life. What are the other influences? Because you're going to be in competition, not just with other winemakers, but also with lifestyle things or how, you know, how to cook stuff or you know, any kind of other thing that they will be getting online. So you have to grab their attention and we'll talk more about that in a bit. So I think if you're doing um, social media, you need a really clear strategy. And I can't tell you how many people I've trained over the years who have never thought about this. As a journalist, I was always say who, what, why, when, where and how. And this is all my slides say actually. And that's the, all the questions you need to answer, but think carefully. So what do you want to achieve? Be really clear in your objectives. Um, please don't say, excuse me, sniffing, there's so much dust in the house. Um, please don't say, I want a sack load of followers because it isn't just about numbers. What do you want these followers to do? That's really important. So your objectives need to be, your social media objectives, tied to your business objectives. And you have to be very clear about what you want people to do. Do you want them to engage with you for something? Do you want them to buy a product? Do you want, I mean, what, what is it exactly you want people to do? And, and I think that once you've really worked that out, then you can work out the strategy and the tactics to get, you know, what you want. I mean, I know that sounds awful to get what you want, but to achieve these objectives. And they need to be specific. 
and measurable, all the SMART objectives. So be very, very clear in what you want to achieve, whether it's raising awareness of something or it's getting people involved with, you know, some kind of user generated content. They send you pictures of them drinking your wines or when they go to visit the vineyards or something. Um, so thinking very, very clearly about these things and don't just make it like, I want 20 million followers by Christmas, make them really realistic and time limited and achievable. And once you've got your strategy and your objectives, keep going back and measuring. And, and I know that um, jo Joanna's going to talk about metrics and things. Um, that was one of the big questions you had. Um, and it's really, really important. So the data driven stuff of, you know, once you've worked out who your audience are and you've got all the data on that, what are they responding to? And you can work out very clearly um, the objectives and the, and the strategy. So it's, um, I think also really important these days, the what, the what is your, what's, what's your story? What is your brand story? And the story I think uh, needs to have that heart to it. It needs to have that ethical kind of um, engagement. People want, you know, real human stories. They also want stories of, you know, like we were little kids and we loved the big bad guy and then the little guy overcame that. Those stories of human endeavor and overcoming adversity. And frankly, when you mess up in business, you know, it's a fantastically successful podcast about called How to Fail. We like to hear how people have had failures and then succeeded afterwards. So that kind of inspirational journey story, that sort of stuff is really important. I've got to just itch my nose, this is awful. Um, so yeah, what do you want to achieve? And um, who are you aiming at? The next one then really would be, where are you gonna be? You can't be in all the platforms, all the places, all the time. And I think it's really important to prioritize these depending on where your customers um, are most likely to be. And I would like to put in a word actually uh, for LinkedIn because LinkedIn, in, in, I mean, this is just some massive stats. It's been growing enormously. And I know that we are not really talking about LinkedIn so much here, but actually it comes up very highly when you Google something. So you need to optimize your profile. Um, I did a LinkedIn webinar the other day and uh, I, mean, I just think people are not thinking about that because that is your customers. It's also people who you'll do business with. It could be investors, it could be all sorts of people. So, um, and your opportunity there, people mostly are lurking on it. But if you wanted to do sort of thought leadership pieces and share stuff and be seen as an expert, there's an opportunity to be seen there. But otherwise you've got to think which platforms and what can we deliver on these platforms and why are we there? And why people use them. This is really important. People use different social media platforms for different reasons. If you think about YouTube, why do you use YouTube? Well, you probably use it to find things out. I looked, she says, pointing out the window, I needed to find out how to prune my apple tree to go to YouTube. It's the how-to place. It's the spending time, wasting time, learning things place. It's the being entertained place. Facebook is probably more likely baby photos and your friends and your mom people like me I'm not there anymore um, uh, and Twitter is much more of a news place people like that fast-moving news and it's also very very good for niche interests and then Instagram is inspirational and lovely and obviously I think for you guys probably um, a, a, a really important place but we're not going to talk about Instagram yet um, so also the where where it's the platforms are different people use them for different things and different types of content works on there or doesn't work on there um, so you need to be thinking what kind of content you're sharing and i know this is you know where am i going to find the time to create all this content but we can talk about that in a bit um, so how are you going to do it uh, you've got to be um, I think once you've worked out your strategy, one of the things actually in terms of creating the content is if you have, you know, you carve out some time and you have a brain dump and make lots of things, having the content buckets, which I think also Jan is going to talk about, where you can think these are the themes I'm going to be covering. And you can literally just, I've, as she said, I used to do my best work on a train. <laughs> Alas, so I have to pretend I'm on a train now. And I shut myself in my thingy and I set, the, set my little um, alarm and pretend I'm on a journey and then I can sit down and concentrate. And that's when you'll do your best content creation kind of stuff. And don't forget about recycling content. Um, the, there's a huge amount of stuff that you can repurpose. Uh, and there are all sorts of tools that you could use where you maybe have a, a, a seminar like this, webinar, you record it and using a wonderful little thing called Otter, a little app, 
It can be transcribed for you in minutes, which you could then chop up and make into separate posts or blog posts. There are so many ways that you can repurpose content and reuse it, which will save a lot of time. In terms of what you're sharing, um, don't sell. Don't overtly sell, she says again, pointing the accusatory finger. But it's not a place for selling, it's a social space. And you can't just sit and broadcast, which I'm sure you know, you know, broadcast how brilliant and delicious your wines are. You need to make people want them from you. You need to tell them a story, get them to buy into everything um, and use the emotions to engage people. That's incredibly important. You can, whether it's, wow, that's amazing. I didn't know that. Or, ooh, I've learned something today. Or, ooh, yum, I want to taste that. You know, thinking about all the different sorts of emotions that you can engage with. And it's actually really not difficult to create content that stimulates emotion. Be proactive. Go out and join conversations. Be very clear in who you're aiming at. And, you know, we will talk more on Instagram next time. But um, engaging with people that you want to target and being seen and be quick on there, maybe turning on notifications and things, I would say that's incredibly important. Um, how often to post? Ah, well, that's a $64 million question. Each platform is very different. Um, and I think, you know, Twitter, unfortunately, the, the time, the lifespan of a tweet is very limited because it's such a noisy space. Um, whereas, you know, content has a much longer lifespan in maybe an Instagram grid or certainly much longer in LinkedIn and you can keep that going. Um, so, yeah, be pro proactive. Identify who you want to talk to and actually go out and um, join in. A lot of people don't do that. They just kind of think, oh, well, I'm just telling you something. You'll come to me. No, you need to be much more proactive these days. And once you've created the content, um, the other thing that's incredibly important is to optimize it. And that is putting the right keywords in, whether you need to use a hashtag or something. Emojis. I never thought I'd say use emojis. I thought somebody of my age um, wouldn't be seen dead using them, but they are really important because they're an international language. They also add color. It's a sort of visual um, shorthand to them and not too many, but it's like a light seasoning. You know, if you're cooking, it's a light seasoning of emojis when appropriate and avoid the aubergine. Um, so, uh, yeah, engage the emotions, use the emojis, visuals with all of your posts. I can't stress that highly enough. We are visual creatures and don't write, you know, if you're tweeting, for example, don't just write, you know, a whole sack load of words because that is cognitively impossible to process when you're doing this. You need to get people to go, oh, stop, look. And a, a beautiful picture is one of the first things that will work. Um, I have to say, I have to mention the awful A word, algorithms. These are your enemy and um, you need to learn how to work them properly in your favor. Uh, the Facebook algorithm is always changing. So this is the other reason you need an agile social media strategy because too many people will have one way of doing things. The algorithm is tweaked and then nothing works anymore. So you might well have found if you have a Facebook page that engagement has gone down. Um, and for the last few months, they've been pushing more highly video stuff, but also groups. You'll find a lot more of the groups you belong to are higher up in your feed. And the algorithm there, if you have never interacted with a brand um, or a person, you are, you know, that brand becomes invisible to you. Facebook wants you to be happy in Facebook land, so they give you more of what you like. And if you are not liking or commenting or sharing a brand or a person's content, they think, oh, you don't like that. I'm not gonna show you any more of their content. So you could have 100,000 followers, and if your content isn't resonating with them and they're not engaging with it, you're invisible unless you pay. And these days, I think, you know, you, it's not expensive, but a, a paid strategy to back up your organic strategy is really important. Um, so there are all sorts of tricks to getting the Instagram um, algorithm to work for you, which we can talk about next time. Uh, but basically, your content's got to resonate with people. They base it on pe things that you've interacted with in the past, relationships um, that you've had with uh, a person or an organization or brand, uh, and the recency, when was it posted, um, and how much they think you might like it based on other things that you have, you know, there's all sorts of signals, they call them. And, um, but essentially, if your content on Facebook is not getting any kind of engagement, mm, the algorithm is not pleased with you. What they want is what they, Facebook called it, meaningful interactions. These are conversations. 
And the way you get conversations going is to ask a question, to invite people to say what they think about us. Or actually say what they feel is more likely to generate a response than say what you think. Because oh, I'm not clever enough to tell you what I think, but I can tell you how I feel. So inviting conversation is really important. I keep saying everything's really important. <laughs> um, so yeah, the algorithm changes all the time. Your content has got to resonate with people. I've got no idea time-wise how I'm doing, but I think there are three really, really important keys to success in this. Your audiences come first and foremost, your customers, your clients, or whoever it is, I'm just gonna call them audiences because it helps with my nice little, oh my God, somebody's at the front door. Oh, um, never mind, I'll keep going. Um, so um, yeah, audiences, what can you do for them? Who are they? Where are they? Uh, how can you uh, provide content that's going to engage them and be of use to them? That's really important. The, the whole adding value to somebody. So work out who they are, what they need from you, maybe audience personas. Um, I find that really helpful if you think, you know, this is the person I'm aiming at and you can target your social media posts accordingly. Behavior. When are they online? What are they doing when they're online? What else are they scrolling and looking at when they're online? How can you make them engage with you? And part of that is the language you use. There are certain behavioral triggers to get them to engage because when you posted something, do you want a reaction or inaction? You've got to think, what do I want somebody to do? Therefore, what makes them care and share? And actually, if you want somebody to do something, make them look good. I guarantee you're going to get a retweet or something if you can tag somebody and it's relevant and you make them look good. So think about the behavior um, of the audiences and what, what you want them to feel or what you want them to do. And, um, and then the content. So once you've got the, the, the A, B, the content part is going to make them behave in a particular way or engage with you. Uh, I could go on for absolutely ages. Joanna, did you want to do your, I've got five minutes, but I, I could go, um, I've, I've got this, but that's later on, questions. If you wanted to go and do your bit, then we can come back and I can do a bit more. That's but, fine, yes, thank yes. you, Sue. yes. Stop that for a sec. Oh, brilliant. Thank and I can see your questions, because I couldn't see anything that's going on. No, no, no. This is <laughs> the great like in a cupboard. I feel between two of you, then between you, you can you can look at the questions, but I'm keeping an eye on the questions. And thanks, everybody, for your comments and for posting some questions. So we'll be able to pull these together and ask them uh, uh, after you've both spoken. So thanks, Sue. We'll look forward to hearing from you um, again um, shortly. Um, so just a very brief introduction to Joanna. Uh, many of you now know exactly what Joanna is up to and what she's doing um, to, for YNGB. She joined us just over six months ago. Uh, she took on a brand new role for YNGB, which was to drive and develop our social media activity in order to increase our presence on, on social media and to grow awareness in our industry. Um, as we all know, those of us that have done social media, it is incredibly time consuming and it requires a great deal of dedication and planning and forethought. Um, and uh, the great thing is um, that Joanna really has been, you know, since she's been curating this, we have seen it has become such an integral and important part of our communications. Um, and the important thing is we've actually seen YNGB social media presence grow month for month. Now, I know, Sue, you said it's not all just about numbers, but it's just been fantastic to see the level of engagement. And I'm, you know, uh, Joanna knows this, uh, but, you know, just the really fantastic comments that we've had from people from outside of the industry, just seeing what YNGB is doing and how it's represented itself its vineyards and its wines to the outside world um, so I don't want to spare you know, spare your blushes Joanna because uh, <laughs> go on you've been um, you, you do a terrific job for us and we're all so grateful um, and just a quick plug here as well you'll see how much activity has been going on over our English wine nights now that's been entirely driven by Joanna um, and uh, we've got a big one tomorrow and she's uh, been managing it brilliantly and uh, we're certainly seeing some great interaction there anyway Joanna I'm going to hand over to you because they're here to listen to you not me oh thank you Julia and wow Sue thank you for your presentation and hi everybody thanks for joining us um, so, like Julia said, I, I, I'm YNGB social media officer. I've started in September last year. And um, yes, so my background, my academic background is in economics, but my professional experience has been always in marketing for luxury and lifestyle brands. 
Um, and it's been fantastic to be part of WineGB and the wine industry. Uh, what I'd like to share with you here today is um, a five-step method that you can easily use to establish your online presence or just easily review some practices that you feel are not working for you uh, very well or as well as you'd like or just to reassure that you're doing a great job. So yeah, I'll, I'll also be sharing some practical tips, so bear with me and I hope you'll find these minutes helpful. Um, I will also share my screen. Um, are you, can you see it? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, I just, okay. So I'd like to start by saying that social media channels should be treated as a marketing tool and not as a standalone method for building your business. Um, so social media should be something that will help you achieve your goals and your business um, and your and to th help you thrive your business or help your business thrive um, and first of all uh, the first step to this method is to have a plan now having a plan is uh, less complicated as the word in plan implies uh, what I would like you to do is just ask yourself one question what do you have what do you want to achieve out of social media so is it getting traffic to your website or increasing sales build up your email list or even brand awareness um, just like Sue said my personal opinion is that you shouldn't focus on getting a huge amount of followers just for the sake of having thousands of followers. You should really focus on um, building a strong community. And also one thing that you should keep present is that if you have engaged uh, followers, then you'll be able to grow organically uh, because the algorithm, the famous algorithm will work in your favor. Um, so yes, yeah, so this goal should really be the overarching goal that, that shines through and comes across each post that you make. Um, the second step is identifying your audience. So I'm sure that when you're doing your business plans, you already know uh, who your target market is. Uh, so for social media, it's exactly the same thing. Try to think who are you talking to, about who are you talking to. And to answer this question, then you need as many information and um, elements to, to, to uh, be successful in defining your audience. So really think about their age, their gender, their location, uh, their annual income, consumption habits, education, marital status, hobbies, even personality traits. What do they like? Um, what do they want to see? What do they want from you? Um, so, yes. Um, after deciding what your primary goal is and what, um, what, who your audience is, who are you talking to, then you have to decide what your metrics are. And this can vary from, I can have, because of my goal that's different to yours, then I will use different metrics. For example, if you want to increase your website traffic to evaluate if you're really achieving that, then you need to, for example, um, account the website clicks uh, and the number of visitors. If it's brand awareness, then you should think about not just the number of followers, but who these followers are. Uh, so, for example, you can see it on Instagram. Uh, you can find your audience's location and I will show you how to do that really quickly. So you log into Instagram like this and you go onto your profile and you click this which is called the hamburger icon and you can see your insights audience here and my internet's not working but it will appear the location and gender the age bracket that uh, of people who are you who are looking at your posts and interacting with you like this and you'll see if you're succeeding or not. Um, if they aren't quite what you hoped for, then it could mean one of two things. 
the content you're creating is actually speaking to a different demographic and you might even consider changing your strategy and uh, use that demographic as your target market or you're just completely missing the mark and you have to reevaluate your whole strategy, which hopefully is not the case. However, this audience um, uh, information will really make a difference in your content and the way that your tone of voice and what you're actually posting, which leads us to step number three, which is create strategic content, uh, also known as personalized content, because what you want to do is um, that your ideal customer feels like you are creating this content specifically for them. Something that I think really helps after uh, determining your plan and your, your audience is to think about what the feed and the discovery page of your audience looks like. So the feed, for those who don't know, are what you see as soon as you open Instagram or Facebook. And the discovery page is um, something that is put together by Instagram and that you can find um, on the magnifier. So I'll show you on my personal one as a consumer. So it's here. And if you click on the magnifier, then you'll see the discovery page which for me goes a lot around uh, food, travel, and fashion, but this is what you have to think. What does your uh, target consumer or ideal customer uh, wants to see uh, and is looking for on social media? To help you create this, it's like I said, just think, just imagine, uh, you really want to attract people to your feed um, and, and this this personalized content will really help them uh, convert into real paying customers so tip number one is what i just said uh tip number two think of ways of providing a value or a solution to your audience because likes won't be a valid metric for a lot longer uh likes are gone in a lot of countries uh they're still used in the uk but i'm uh, i think they will soon be gone too so what makes your 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 ideal customer share a post or save it um so think of ways of providing a value or solution to your audience another tip that for me is a, a lifesaver time saver tip is content buckets really think about four or five topics that you can post recurrently and that can help you create content. For example, one of it is your USPs. I personally think that your, US, your biggest USP is yourself. And especially to a lot of the, sm the smaller um, companies and smaller producers, I mean, people want to buy from people. Um, and you, you are you are your brand's biggest asset. Uh, just share, share who you are. Share your biggest victories. Share your struggles. Um, just let them know you. Really, let your audience know you because that's what they want to. It that's how you build a relation and and a meaning, meaningful connection with your customer. Again, choose the right metrics for you. I'm sorry, I'm just <laughs> blurbing around. Um, choose the right metrics for you and um, to help you clearly evaluate how well you're doing. Another thing is you can experiment. Um, see what's working for you, see what's not. Try a different tone of voice sometimes. Just um, always on brand, but it's it's good to experiment and really be aware of what makes your customer engage with you. Um, okay, so the fourth step is to locate and engage with your target audience, because consistency, which is a a, a, a word that we use a lot in social media, is not just about posting once a day. Or, or, or twice a day. Uh, it's really important with, that you're, con you're consistently engaging with your target audience. Um, and again, you can, you can easily do this um, by thinking about the Instagram or Facebook accounts that you're, or 
just what your customer wants to to see and and follow so one way of engaging with potential new customers who have not seen you yet um, is through hashtags um, ideal times and consistency in engagement and posting um, so to find a uh, a customer a potential customer you can go to a competitor for example and hit the liked buy button you can find them for i can go for example to the winerist is uh they have a huge followership they post really lovely inspirational content and you know essentially that these people their followers they're 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 interested in wine and and the lifestyle around it so you can just go to a photo here like this for example and you can click on like buy and these are all your potential customers so you can easily just click through them and uh, like one of their posts uh, and they will receive a notification that will um, show them you exist uh, another tip is authenticity again you are your brand's biggest USP people want to know the story behind the wines that they're drinking wine is essentially a product that is about sharing and enjoying um, and there is so much behind it uh, other than just the final product so really share with them who you are um and yes just <laughs> uh, just show yourself um tip number seven is to post when your audience is online you can easily find that on instagram like i showed you before you can also do that on facebook um if you go to facebook and you have a business um profile then you can just go into insights and you'll find so many different things here uh, about your followers and um, how your posts are doing so you do get a lot of free data from these um, platforms which i find super helpful um, okay so final step is to encourage meaningful connections because a long-term connection um, can be built with every action that they take that your followers take on your account um, again just these actions are everything from a like from a share from a, a saved post um, something that i think it's really nice for when to for brands to do is to uh, reply to every comment encourage people to uh, reach out to you to send you a dm uh, share their experiences when they're drinking your wines um, uh, yes yeah, so uh, something else is a call to action calls to action are super in important because um social media again is just a tool it's a way of getting your customer to their final destination so make sure that you always have an updated link on your bio or on your facebook post that you include a, a link to your website or to a blog post um, and another idea that i really like is conversation starters so for example on instagram you can you can do a ask me anything kind of session so just post out a video saying that you have some spare time and uh, invite people to engage with you to talk to you to ask you questions and then just answer them truthfully and in such a way that you can really share your accomplishments your struggles and uh more details about start to finish about your product and that's about it that's my <laughs> those are my that's my advice excellent thank you so much joanna i think when you um just lose the screen and i think we're back to um yes uh, back to perfect that's great um joanna that's brilliant thank you so much um i know sue you wanted to add a few more things um if i gave you about five minutes or something would that be all right and then we'll have time to ask a few questions Quite a few questions are coming in now too so there might need to be some fairly brief answers to said questions but um i'll hand over to you just for a few more minutes uh, that's fine i was just looking actually at the questions so i was going to go and answer those the ones that are in the questions rather than in the chat but i think some things have come up but um 
I think, yeah, the, the point again about buying, we want to do business with people. We don't necessarily want to do a business with a, with a logo, with a brand like that. So p pictures of you and your story are really important. And exactly as Jana said, it's, it's a hospitable sharing thing. Um, my friends who run Mir well, own Mirabeau Wine, um, have a look at what they do in terms of their brand positioning and stuff. And they've really put Jeannie, who's the what Stephen and Jeannie set up the brand. Um, Jeannie's doing an awful lot more of her as an individual. Um, and I think that's, um, that's a really good way of doing it. So you've bought into the brand, the person who's behind it, um, and not just pictures of product all the time, because that's not, you know, we don't really care so much about what a bottle is, but we care about the whole lifestyle and the people. Um, what I could do is just start going through the questions in the question. Is that, um, sorry, I can't see. The questions are in front of me now. Um, so Sally asked, should a strategy start with registering a business Facebook and Instagram page rather than a personal one? And if so, why? Lots of reasons why you should have a business page, um, not least of which is you get better analytics. You can see a lot more of the insights of what's going on and you wouldn't be able to do any, um, or you can do promotions and stuff, but there's an awful lot of reasons why. Um, and also the way that the page, particularly on Instagram, looks in terms of how you get in touch with people and stuff like that. So, um, and to have a, a uh, an Instagram business page, you have to have a Facebook page, which is really annoying. So I have a business page on Facebook, but I never use it. Um, but anyway, yeah, it's really important to do that and to, to put the bios that you write are incredibly important. They need to have the right keywords in them. People need to go, oh, I get it as soon as they see it and I want to follow you. Uh, Tim, what is an algorithm? <laughs> an algorithm is, I'm terrible at maths and I'm not a computer scientist, but it's something rather that makes the computer you know, the, the social media platforms work and that they determine what you see. This is why we're in such a mess, I think, because the social media platforms are showing people more of what they like. So we've become very polarized. So the algorithms determine what they're serving up to you. So these are like formula, if you like, mathematical formula. Um, Victoria, how can you start generating responses on Facebook if you aren't getting many? Ah, well, that's the, again, having something that's going to resonate with people and perhaps being proactive. I think the problem when face, the Facebook, um, uh, your page isn't getting much interaction is you really need to work quite hard to start it off again. Um, and it could be that it's got to be, you know, you probably need a paid strategy behind the organic one. Um, so if you aren't getting any, you need to look at why, you need to look at your analytics, you need to think about whether this is actually making somebody feel something. Is it that you've been talking about your product all the time or the, you know the functionality of it or or something rather than the actual human side the life behind it facebook particularly is more of a community type thing so what's the community involvement there um you know you need to get your fans involved perhaps that's it maybe it's getting fans to start interacting with it people have quite a lot of tricks for getting instagram algorithm to work for them which is getting people to go in and comment so perhaps you could do that to sort of tickle the algorithm a bit and wake it up um uh, Trisha, apart from the normal six W's, and what, what's that? What should we think about the seventh? How much will it cost in money, time, or effort? What's that? Six W's. Who, what, why, when, where? That's five. I don't know what that means. Sorry. Uh, where can we find the courses, Aaron? Oh, hello, Pippa. Thank you. Um, well, I'm going to put a bunch of them online, and uh, because they all were in person until recently, so I haven't got any online ones yet, but um, I will be running quite a lot of uh, more webinars actually I thought if I do a bunch of free webinars for business small business to get it you know teach you things in this kind of climate that would be helpful um, but yeah I will be putting stuff online and I don't have a website so you can follow me um, on uh, social media if you add enough L's you can find me anywhere so I'm on Twitter Instagram and uh, LinkedIn do connect with me there so Llewellyn with loads of L's four of them all together um, Sue Llewellyn same name everywhere um, Quantity or quality posts, says Johan. Uh, what's the opinion? Oh my God, quality, not quantity. Absolutely quality every time. Um, don't just, there's so much, and I was going to say a rude word, but I'm not going to, so much rubbish out there. Um, you, you know, quality always. It's far better to have something that's really good and not to bore your followers. Um, uh, Trisha, probably have to go back to your own company's mission statement and what are your goals and objectives for the business here? Am I wrong? I'm not quite sure what the question 
is there, but um, your mission okay. statement. I don't think so. You just, is this related to um, the, the first, the first idea of what do you want to achieve with social media? If, if, if that's it, then, then no, because again, this is just a tool. It's another way of getting to new customers and strengthening the relationship that you have with existing customers. Um, if it's about the audience, again, it depends on what you want, uh, of who you want to, to um, start building a relationship with and who you want to notice uh, your brand, uh, if that was the question. I'm just going to put us onto gallery view because um, it's lovely to have both of you um, uh, addressing some of these questions. So um, otherwise, I think for people, it sort of bounces in on a big, a big screen or whatever. So hopefully that will have changed. Uh, then we've got you both coming in on the conversation, which is brilliant. Um, so that you're, do, you're doing a brilliant job going through the questions. Thank you for that, because it's lovely to see so many coming in. There's a few more, actually. Um, uh, for Sally, again, asking about Facebook pixels. Are they key to building audience insight? I've never used Facebook pixel. It's a tracking thing, but I don't even have a website, so I wouldn't know how to answer that one, I'm afraid. Um, Key to building audience insights, I don't think so. I think you can still get the insights without having the pixel thing. I don't, honestly don't know enough about pixels, the thing. It's called Facebook Pixel. Um, Johan, TikTok. Oh, I hope somebody will <laughs> How does it stack up compared to other platforms? Is it a tool suitable for promoting wine brands? Any wineries having success on it? Oh, God. TikTok is absolutely joyful. Um, it's brilliant. I don't know yet. Um, uh, once I dive into TikTok, that's me gone and laughing hysterically for hours, but I will have a look for wine and I can let you know if I find any on there. Certainly, um, obviously me as a journalist, I'm finding lots of journalists using it and brands are using it in very interesting ways. So obviously a young audience, it's very visual, it's incredibly creative. Um, so it's actually a place where you should go and get inspired about creating really good uh, video content. And if you don't know how to do it, when well, I just went in and experimented, but get a young person to show you. But, so would, it, would you agree that it would depend also on the brand itself and how they, they present themselves as a brand? If it's too serious, probably not. But if, you're, if your brand has a fun element to it, then why not just give it a try? Absolutely. And I think, why shouldn't a brand have a fun element to it? Um, <laughs> particularly in this kind of climate at the moment. And also I think, and the other opportunity we have now is everyone is experimenting. We're doing this, which we never would have done before. You can go in and you can start testing things out. I mean, I wouldn't go and put your whole strategy into TikTok, but it's massive. It's grown hugely. And it's not just 15 year olds using it. It's all sorts of people. And some of the serious brands, um, I mean, you think older ones, I don't know, like the Washington Post, for example, um, you wouldn't really think about somebody like that being on there. But if you look at what the guy who's doing it for them, it's, it's brilliant what he's doing. And you might think, well, you know, what's that got to do with anything? These are customers of the future. And that's really important. Um, and, oh yeah, sorry, uh, Trisha, you answered my question about the seven hows, I mean Ws, who, what, why, when, where, how, and how much. Um, but I can't remember what the question was. Um, sorry, I just couldn't remember what the things were. Uh, where was it? Oh, apart from the normal sixes, um, oh, how much will it cost? What, your social media thing? How long is a piece of string? The adverts themselves, if you're promoting posts, don't actually have to cost a lot of money. Um, it costs a lot in time, I would say that much. And I think actually one of the things that if you're, if you're really doing, and that was another question somebody asked, what is UGC? user generated content that's other people's pictures or videos if your strategy involves um ugc other people's stuff that is actually going to be free for you you know they're, they're taking the pictures or making the videos and if they're part of your community they want you to use it and that if you look at for example on instagram look at what the manchester evening news do for example their whole grid all the pictures that is entirely almost entirely 96% or something, user-generated content. These are other people's pictures and they want to be there, so they tag Manchester Evening News and then their content gets featured. So you could be doing something like that, which isn't gonna cost you anything. It's just gonna cost you time in building those relationships. And that is the most important thing. 
Social media is social. It's about relationships. It's about people. It's about behavior. It's about belonging. We are all human and we want to belong. And, you know, you, your wine tribe, you know, you need to just find out who they are and make them feel as though they belong and they want to come with you on that journey. So it's not a sort of selling, it's not a selling thing at all. It's just a belonging and conversational thing. Uh, Time-wise, have we got any other questions? Sorry, I think that was all of, oh, hang on. Um, we need to, we've, uh, we've got one or two, actually. There's what, there are a couple that, I, in fact, I picked out on the chat, which I wanted to um, ask the both of you, because I think they're quite pertinent. Um, Janine has asked, um, realistically, how much time should one dedicate to social media daily? Again, this is the length of string question, but... <laughs> If you're if you're not even just starting out, but you're you're managing two or three of these channels, perhaps it's part of your business. Um, you've established that that's something you want to do. Realistically, how much time do you think you can or should give to it? Joanna, do you want to go first? Um, that's a really hard question because that's literally what I do all day for my job. But it's um, try an hour. Try being on each platform try uh, setting one hour of your day to go around each platform and see what's going on and what it's really good to have ideas. It's really good. It's a great way to keep you aware of what's going in the world of what the consumer and your fellow producers mood is at the moment. Um, so it guaranteed it won't be wasted time. Um, so that would be my suggestion. So I would think you'd like to bring in. Yeah, I'd say, um, I'd always say start by listening. Go and have a look at what other people are doing. Go and look at what's out there. Go and get inspired by things. Adopt, adapt, improve. If you see something you like the look of that's caught your eye, there's a reason why. And you can do something with that. So thinking about, ask people. Invite their opinion. Have a little focus group of your customers and find out what, what kind of places that, you know, what other things are they looking at? What kind of content are they hoping to get from you? Um, what works for them and it doesn't have to take a huge amount of time a friend of mine turned herself into an Instagram influencer um, by spending 20 minutes a day going to talk um, five being proactively engaging with five different accounts every day she'd go in and she'd comment on their stuff and she always was there when she posted something you need to be active afterwards to keep the algorithm going so she would be actively responding to all the comments she got so her proactive strategy I think she's got 23,000 followers or something now and she's got great brand deals and stuff like that but it didn't take a huge amount of time because she had a full-time job working at the University of Cardiff so um, you know it doesn't have to take an awful lot of time but if you have a strategy that's going to save you the time I think it's very difficult it's really difficult when you suddenly sit there and you think oh I've got to post something now and you got to, oh, I must take a picture and then you fiddle about. That takes forever, which is why I don't post that often on Instagram because I haven't been on the train recently. I need to sit down and concentrate on writing a bunch of things. But yeah. But there are also, cool. sorry, Sue. That's right. There are also platforms that will allow you to schedule in posts. It's not great to have automated posts because of the algorithm. Instagram and Facebook are really intelligent platforms. However, you can use them and you'll receive a push notification when the time comes uh, to post. And that's one way of just dedicating one hour to plan your, your two weeks or a month. Just be mindful if it's raining, don't say it's a lovely day here at the vineyard. But other than that, it's a, it's a really great way of just get you started and not waste a lot of time when you're with your posts. If you are going to be scheduling posts, you have to be so careful uh, because if something terrible has happened and you're merrily talking about something nice and fluffy, then you're going to look really bad. So I've always said, if somebody's got scheduled posts lined up, someone needs to be responsible to keep an eye on the news, what's going on in the world um, and to take those posts down. Um, immediately don't don't put stuff out when there's a crisis going on or something bad um actually, just one question as, a, as as an ignorant one here when you say take post down and you can do that on twitter can you do that on instagram as well and on facebook oh yeah. I, I think yeah but i think sue was oh, it meant well, that before it goes out okay. don't publish it yes that's why the push notification so just get get it to to send you a notification and then you'll post it yourself. 
but that's that doesn't take a lot of time you have control over that there's one other question that was inspired in the chat and then we'll have time to um sue you're being brilliant and thank you for monitoring the cues and the q and a's on the um in, in that bit too um but um sien from bothy um uh, was obviously picking up on what you said about you know you're your best usp um for your business and she said, does, does this mean that we should post photos of ourselves and i'm sure some people probably very naturally don't feel terribly comfortable you know to appear showy offy or anything like that are there any very brief tips tips you can think of to sort of bring in your personality or bring in the personality um, as yourselves? I think you definitely should. I know people aren't comfortable in front of the camera, but it's not just, maybe it's not just you, it's you and the people around you. Um, and you know, if you're lucky enough to have a, a team of people, there's probably somebody who's a bit of a media star, you know, and quite often it's the least likely person, somebody who's just got personality and character. So, um, and there are ways of getting confident in front of the camera, um, you know, slowly. Don't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't expect to be amazing straight away, but that's part of the charm of it. Mm. And actually this authentic, authenticity is an overused word in social media, but it's true. We want people to be honest and open. And, and I can see Victoria has asked, is it a good idea to talk about the negative impact the frost has had? Yeah, because that's real life. And it also is empathy. We go, oh my God, that's terrible for you. How awful. And other gardeners would come in and say, yeah, it ruined my, I know I've been covering up all my seedlings, but you know, it's that sort of thing. It'll, it'll generate that human um, connection with other people who've had the same thing. So, um, you know, I can't really see a bad side of it. Uh, obviously if you were trying to get investment from somebody who didn't believe frost existed, that might be a problem, but otherwise I think it builds the connection and and that is a struggle that you, you know, this is how you overcome it or how you anticipate these kind of things. Or, you know, it's a whole educative kind of series, if you want, of things that you have to contend with, whether it's, I don't know, insects or climate or frosts or soil, whatever it is, it's all interesting. And you can make a great content stream out of it. So, yes, your journey, your story, the people who work for you, all of that stuff is what makes social media really good and really interesting. And then you buy into the brand and you, you know, you follow the people on their journey. There's a, there was a good um, question actually. Uh, does the, the, does that engagement work when you post as a brand rather than an individual? In a way you've kind of answered that anyway, because the personality comes out when you're doing yourself as an individual, but of course you, you want to connect yourself with the brand as well. So um, any little tips there? Personally, I'd rather hear from a person than a brand. Um, or I'd like to see the faces behind the brand. I'd like to know what they, what they believe in, what they think is right. You know, I, I would like to buy from companies I believe are ethical and look after people and look after the environment. So, you know, and if it's just a logo talking to me, it's really interesting looking at social media, how, you know, faceless organizations of brands or a Doncaster Council actually is hilarious at the moment. Um, their advice is brilliant on Twitter. You'd think Doncaster Council, for goodness sake, but it's really, really funny. There's a whole stream about emus and, and somebody like the um, Museum of English Rural Life, they have been absolute megastars on social media because they've had a personality, a quirky personality, or something a bit entertaining or funny or unexpected. So brands, I think, need something. Greg's are really good, <laughs> really good on social media. Um, just something that makes you believe it's a real person, it's got a personality, it's got a tone of voice. If it's just bland, dull, here's my package, oh dear, I don't, I don't really care. And you need people to care because then they'll share and they'll tell their friends. Very good, very good call that. Um, uh, a good one here is, can you recommend some apps to manage social media? For example, the best push notification scheduler and any others. Uh, we don't have a lot of time yet because that could cover practically an entire hour of discussion in itself. But is there anything just for people who would like to get onto, you know, onto doing a bit more with their social media activity? Is there anything that you can recommend that would be easy to use? I really like Later. Uh, I don't know, Sue. Yeah, I like Later as well. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's great. It's, it works perfectly because you can see your schedule uh, weekly and monthly and also see the grid of your Instagram. So visually you can really plan how it will look like and make it look as nice as possible. So that's just for Instagram though. Um, uh, but you, you can also post on Facebook uh, through, and Twitter. Yeah, and Twitter not, as well, right? no, sorry, yeah, Facebook and, and Instagram, but not Twitter and not LinkedIn. Um, okay. I think something like Hootsuite um, or 
I don't know, there's all sorts of different organisations that do this. Yes. Depends on your budget. That's the other thing. Um, and there's all sorts of apps that you can do to create, um, use to get amazing content, beautiful stuff. Um, but we can probably talk about that next time. I'm very glad there is a next time because we've got more questions coming in for this session than we have for the others. And so you've obviously inspired and engaged uh, everybody who's been tuning in to, um, to ask lots of questions. They want to know more, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, we've got, we are about seven o'clock, but I just had this one question because again, I think this is something you did cover it just briefly, but maybe as a brief summary, um, this question from Hannah, which are the best platforms for B2C? Um, I know, Joanna, there's some content on the YGB website already, um, you know, about the, the, different, uh, uh, the different audiences that we've found for, for the three platforms that we do. But if you wouldn't mind, um, between you, just to summarise what the best platforms are for B2C, and then people will be able to take that away and it'll be something they can crack on with. Sue. So. I'm sorry, I was just looking at another question. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd asked Joanna, so I was looking and I just got distracted by James's question saying, what do you think about putting the same post on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter? No, it's like I said at the start, the different platforms speak different languages. Um, and obviously Twitter is a different thing from Instagram and Facebook, that's the same company. Um, so if you put the cross post between those two, you don't get the picture. Um, you know, it just says Instagram.com if you're on Twitter or vice versa. It looks like rubbish. And but that's cross-posting. Cross-posting, yeah. Yes. But you can use the same. It, it just depends on the content. I think oh. we might disagree here. But no, no, yes, you can. I thought it was, sorry, I took that as being cross-posting. So literally just automatically posting from one platform to the other, which is a really big no-no in my book. But you absolutely yes, take absolutely. the same picture yeah. and tweak it. You just translate it for the platform. Exactly. So we're on the same page. <laughs> Go ahead, James. <laughs> Sorry, what was, the, what was the other question? I'm so sorry. Uh, best platform for B2C, which I know you've answered before, but just a, a little bit more about it. B2C. It, it depends where your audience are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're aiming at people, so my dog's about to come in now, I can hear <laughs> uh, We're going to, oh, we're going to get woofed at. Um, uh, yeah, I, personally, I, I would have thought that Instagram right now is the best um, platform. You've got your dog well timed, obviously, because we've just yeah. gone past seven o'clock. So obviously, dog was coming in to say, "Right, that's the end of our hour." Everyone, um, listen. Thank you, um, particularly to Sue and to Joanna. I think it's been so insightful. There is still so much to learn. Don't forget, Edwards. In a couple of weeks' time, you're going to be presenting on Instagram, so it can be all about Instagram. But I rather suspect that there may be um, another couple of sessions coming up as well to answer all these questions. Um, Sue Llewellyn. You can find her on the various platforms at Sue Llewellyn uh, with all the L's. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we really look forward to seeing you in a fortnight. Um, we've recorded this, web this webinar. We'll get it up on our YouTube channel and on the web page as soon as possible. Uh, we'll let you know in our next bulletin. Um, don't forget, next week we've got a webinar on direct sales to the consumer. Really thrilled. We've got Elizabeth else um, talking about that. Don't forget, please feed and um, put in the feedback form. If you've got any more questions, that will really help Sue and Joanna for the, uh, the next uh, session as well. And really all it leaves for me to say is thank you again to you Sue and uh, to Joanna and obviously to everybody who's tuned in thanks very much and have a great evening thank you thank you enjoy your wine <laughs> bye <laughs>